So guys, they got what we made here for so to go in and they have refused the media to enter inside. We have a lot of media here outside. So guys, we are outside, no entry. So we we'll just wait here and see what is, what will happen. So guys, we are still outside.
So guys, we are still outside. Mugani, we are going to the Sorry guys, but we can't enter inside. Thank you. 
Yvonne Aquino. You're on behalf of the prosecution, Ms. Pez. Yes. Um, together with my Undimu, um, together with my colleague, Ms. Maika, Ms. Kerubo, um, Mr. Kirago, and Ms. Njorogi. There are two different files. <laughs> Once we are done with this, definitely be produced. I don't know why I think they're on the same file. I'd indicated to him there are two different files. <laughs> and the particulars, if at all any name was to be punished, 
probably would be that of William Ruto if the particular class were not true. It would not be the name of David Landa. So what is the fear of putting the name of William Ruto as the complainer? Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is a very, uh, and you can see, I don't know how it has been drafted, but uh, if there was a name to be tarnished here, the person who is looking like ungrateful and not quite a friend would be William Ruto. So I'm urging the court to read the charge carefully and reject it. Because it doesn't, something is not adding up in this case. Even if we go to trial on this, and even if David Ganga comes, it will not be sufficient without William Ruto as a complaint. Yes, Your Honor. Just to be first on what you is not able to leave it and the particulars do not inform on how it should be. It does not disclose who is the complainant. Is the complainant Mr. William Ruto or is it P.L. Langat? And this is so important, the honor and fundamentally important and that profit in the sense that it shall be requiring the statements of the complainant at the trial or at the fullness of time. So if a church it is jumbled up as it is, Your Honor, it's only causing embarrassment to our client. And to this court. That's for you. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Your Honor.
Under Article 50 of the Constitution, an accused person has a right to be informed in sufficient detail of the charges proposed against him. Sufficient detail. What is presented as a charge sheet? If you look at the count from one, it talks of cyber harassment. But look at the particulars. That is where the devil lies. <laughs> <laughs> and where the devil lies, <coughs> it sets out a purported expose, but proceed to show you where he's sleeping, content whose information you knew to be false and calculated to tarnish and discredit the reputation of one David Lagat. This speaks, Yon, to a question of reputation, not harassment. And if it is reputation, it's defamation. If David Langat or William Ruto thinks that this post has injured their reputation in the eyes of right-thinking members of the society, their recourse is in the civil court. They sue for defamation. And criminal defamation is no longer applicable in our legal system. But if the particulars presented before you also, which is a civil wrong. The count in the church speaks to cyber harassment. There's disconnect in the church. So will Mr. Morara be required to respond to the count of cyber harassment? Or 
from the particulars of defamation. That church in Tiona should not be registered at this particular point. And the state <coughs> can advise the complainant that in relation to reputation, the chief magistrate's court may remain in this civil division. You can go there. In relation to cyber harassment, the complainant should come with better particulars, not this one. So having dissected those two, the particulars of the charge and the count on the charge sheet, your honor should exercise your discretion and refuse to register this charge as presented before you and direct that Mr. Morara to this such brief copy. Unless otherwise locally defamed. So this is prejudicial at the outset. That's all. about what the fair trial all that is all that is under article 52 from 2a all through to 2 i believe j 52 a all through to 50 q your honor is what constitutes fair trial so that you know, we stand before you this morning or afternoon, the accused person is clearly not able to understand, Your Honor, what is responding to that. This is a, this is a provision, Your Honor, or this is a right, Your Honor, which cannot be limited. I invite God to find basis on those two 
Article 09 to reject the charge that uh, has been read out. That was the matter. Yes, uh, Your Honor, I just wanted to say one or two things. Yes, Your Honor, my name is uh, Eric Lurie. Your Honor, you've been referred to articles of to refresh what has been stated. But Your Honor, so that you are not told that uh, this court cannot deal with the questions of constitutional interpretation, then I also wish to refer this court to the Criminal Procedure Court, and I would want to uh, make reference to Section 135 with regard to the framing of charges. Section 135 with regards to the federal charge. And Your Honor, it underpins the constitutional requirements that an accused person is entitled to sufficient information to be in a position to be. To the charges that are made against that person. The only second you have the jurisdiction and the discretion under section 89 of the CPC to decline these charges <coughs> if you are of the opinion and your honor will persuade you Of this opinion, that the charge before does not in sufficient material disclose a case to enable the accused person. I'll finally say, and I, I think I have said this before, if we continue at this rate, we will have to seriously expand this court. Because you know, what it would mean is that any statement that a person can make under the free speech that is guaranteed in this country. Sometimes, yes, I can say something that can be offensive, but does that constitute a crime? It's the danger that we face in this kind of uh, And for those reasons, and being that these courts are temples of justice, there are games that can be played out there. And Irana, I think it is also important for me to say that this court has recognized, under the High Court, I think, has recognized 
the manner in which of late police have been conducting their arrests by way of abduction of those people they consider to be suspects. There is actually an order of the High Court that has directed <coughs> that the police must comply with the law when it comes to effecting arrest. So when someone is abducted, like the accused was abducted, in clear contravention of a, of a court order, and then he's brought here for the court to sanctify the actions, the illegal actions that have been undertaken. And the attempt to, to sanctify the, you know, those actions does not meet what is contained in our laws in terms of the kind of charges that should be presented and accepted before the court. Your Honor, this court must remain what it is supposed to be, a court of law. We may not be able to stop the police in the manner in which they are behaving. <coughs> But they must be a place where they know that they can play their little games outside there with the lives of each and every one of us because it basically means that no one is safe. I can make a statement that it is deemed criminal. <coughs> Let them know that those games will not be entertained within the corridors of justice. And so, Your Honor, I plead with this court that we must take all the circumstances of this case. And the circumstances of this case then explain the paucity in the charge as has been presented before. Your Honor, I think you have
Yes, 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 Your Honor. Uh, so, um, my final point is that uh, even though the case the man appears to be an overview, but this court must look at the circumstances of the arrest and it will be able to understand. that the intention here is for this coach to be a condemned. We abducted him. We were unable to... any reason and we present a child teacher and place it control the court. And the court then is supposed to be the one to sanctify because your honor the moment you accept this child and I think if it was a proper child we would have no problem even though we would have known it is for the But the problem here is that your honor if you accept this child teacher especially as it is fair. <laughs> but then even this court will eventually almost be on trial the way our police are on trial. You know, for that reason, I'm noting that uh, uh, Mr. Morara had uh, a young counsel Calculated to tarnish and discredit 
the reputation of one David Morata. So, Your Honor, in brief, the question is, is Morata answering to the charge of cyber harassment or to the charge of publishing false information or civil uh, or information? Your Honor, in brief, as I associated both my learned senior and so Eric Tori stated, I was with Morara when he was being arrested. The police refused to grant me access. Oh, <coughs> there are articles of my, and there are orders that have been given by the High Court that the police ought to respect and ought to follow articles of my own. Some of those orders that I personally obtained them. Additionally, they did not disclose why they were arresting him or who they were. Some of them were masked. <coughs> Your Honor, the question is, we are dealing with people. So please just request that they allow me to manage the crowd. We request everybody after the gentleman in the big panel. They just want us to kindly step out of the Please, you can listen from outside. We have, uh, we have speakers. Alternative is called the Defamation Act. 
is sufficient to address any <coughs> reputational damages. And so there will be justice for the complainant, whichever, if you make the decision we are requesting you to make. And the other one is in Article 23A. That article obligates this court to adopt Article 20, sub Article 3A. You know, this court cannot interpret the Constitution that jurisdiction belongs to the High Court. However, this court, as a constitutional organ, must apply the Constitution. And when you look at Article 23A, it requires this court and all tribunals to adopt the interpretation that most favors the enjoyment of others. In this case, Morales' right to freedom of speech, especially on the issues he's talking about. So, Your Honor, there's sufficient legal basis for you to find that this charge does <coughs> not disclose a criminal case, and that the remedy or alternative remedy of defamation is sufficient. Thank you so much, Your Honor. You are perhaps before the just to respond. Just to hear the information. Only one about the charge sheet because it will become relevant for them in response. Only one. <coughs> uh, perhaps you want to just disclose the, the bad faith in which this matter has been instituted. That the charge sheet itself is indicating erroneous dates when our client was arrested. We say that they arrested him today. And the fact is that they arrested him yesterday. They have a duty to disclose all the material facts, and there is a reason why the CPC requires a date of arrest to be indicated on a charge sheet. Eventually, Your Honor, when you seek to retire, kindly order the DCI office, and this is the DCI himself, to release three phones and one laptop belonging to our client, what is, as it is charging most of the Just have a brief response. Maybe to just start off, uh, uh, it's the first time I'm seeing Mr. Ndeg when you have come. <laughs> so it is unlike him. Uh, Your Honor, just uh, in brief response, in terms of arrest, it is true the accused person was arrested yesterday and has been produced in court within the required time limit. Your name for the record? Undimu. And has been produced in court within the required time limit. In terms of access to counsel, I did confirm with the officers that he was allowed access to counsel. And the counsel who was allowed was Mr. Ndeg Wanjiru. And in fact, Mr. Ndegwanjiru did appear at our office today morning. <laughs> we confirmed that the charge sheet will be brought. 
He was accompanied by two other councils. Though they declined my tea invitation. <laughs> Your Honor, in terms of the charge sheet, the CPC is very clear that a charge sheet must contain two critical elements. That is the statement of the offense and the particulars of the charge. Your Honor, my colleagues, my senior colleagues and junior colleagues have not disputed that there is a statement of the offense. And the particulars. The contention, especially my senior colleagues have raised, is what is harassment? Your Honor, I look at that particular act the Computer Nuisance and Cyber Crimes Act, it does not in any way define what harassment is. Harassment takes various forms. For one to draw a conclusion that harassment has occurred. The particulars in the charge I have clearly informed the accused person of the accusation that he is facing. <clears throat> and what my colleague, uh, my colleagues are asking you to do is to go to the substance and the merits of the charges, to go to the evidential material. At, as at this point, Your Honor, <laughs> As at this point, what court ought to consider <coughs> that the particulars of the charge have sufficiently informed the accused person of the accusation against him, which in our humble view are sufficient to enable him respond to the charges. To delve into other issues, Your Honor, would be going to the merits and the merits of the particular matter. I do understand the constitutional issue that have been raised by my senior colleagues, colleagues. And those issues cannot be raised as at this point. The only purpose we are here for today is purposes of the charge sheet, whether it has statement of the offense and the particulars of the offense and other considerations. Refer this court to section 137 of the CPC. You run on the last point that uh, Mr. Ndegwa has raised on the issue of the three phones and one laptop. I undertake to follow up the issue with the investigating officer to find out if they are interested in the material or the same should be released to the accused person and I take to inform him before the closure of business today as to what the response of the investigating officer has been. Luckily, I have Mr. Ndegwa's number. <laughs> and also, Mr. Eric Peuri. Surprisingly, the squatter from Tuapa has not spoken. I'm sure he'll respond. <laughs> My, my colleague uh, of the DPP, let the record reflect that my name is uh, Moral Bata. 
Lord Sarge is Kenya Vice President. Vice President. I need to put a rejoinder. We only respond to the issue of the charge sheet. The other issue are more concerned as at this point this court only ought to consider whether the statement of the offence meets the legal criteria and whether the particulars of the offence have contained sufficient details. And I've gone to the issue of the harassment charge. Okay. Yes. Martha Karua, SC, leading the defense team. Just to remind the court that uh, our plea is that the charge be dismissed or rejected as defective under 89.5 of the CPC. Our submissions by the various councils point to that direction in adequate words. And it is important that the court only invites the accused to plead to a charge that discloses a course of action. And we have shown the mismatch between the offense charge and the particulars. I need not go beyond that. But when you retire to make a ruling, should you require more time? We urge you to consider releasing Mr. Morala, who is an informed is an officer of this court, on okay, I'm a, on a personal board. He is, I'm informed, he's not an officer of the court, but uh, he, he is uh, a person who is well known, has a fixed abode in town, and he is not a flight risk. You may consider releasing him on a personal bond because we must not encourage the behavior of the police of punishing people in advance of appearing before the court. By punishing, I mean detention, unnecessary detention. He is a person who can actually be released on the free bond. And we, we are many, and we will make sure he is here. The environment is not conducive. I think I should release the girl. Yes. The best way to do that is to preserve the room. Yes. He is a, a businessman mm. and he is a very well known 
active and engaged citizen. And he's also a lawyer waiting to be admitted. I actually thought he was already admitted. That's why I'm oh, saying so officer. So, so you can afford cash for the one million. Yeah. Oh, no. Go on. submissions on the issue of bail. Mm. I just wanted to go on record that we are not objecting to bail. Maybe on condition that uh, my vice president ensures that he reports to the investigating officer whenever he's required. So today is uh, first. What does the people tomorrow? You come on 3rd of October. Sorry, no, 3rd of October. You come tomorrow at 2. 2 p.m. tomorrow. Um, is that Thursday? Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow,
Sorry guys, I was shaking, shaking because we had a lot of people, so I could have not.